common requirement for building automation HVAC systems is to control the amount of heating and cooling water. How do you get that low voltage control signal from your computer system to take control of your water flow? Well that's the job of the valve actuator. This valve actuator bolts to the top of the valve body and uses a linear motion to control the amount of stroke in the valve and thus the amount of water flow. The valve actuators come in many different shapes and sizes depending on the size of the valve body and the amount of water flow. In this video workshop, we're going to show you how to wire this valve actuator and take control of your water flow. So let's head back to the workshop and get started. Okay, so here we are back at the workshop. Let's take a look at what we're going to do from a high level. We're going to wire 24 volts AC to the actuator that's going to power the motor inside of it. Then we're going to wire an analog output module that will generate a 0 to 10 volt DC control voltage. The actuator will read that value and move the linear actuator to the correct position of 0 to 100%. So for this workshop, I'll be using a Snappack Learning Center. It's basically a Snappack system with a controller, a rack, and several I.O. modules that we use for training here at Opto22. And this panel along the front here simulates some of the typical I.O. signals that you'd see, like a meter, a potentiometer, some LEDs, and switches. The controller is running a control strategy that's loaded into its memory. I'll be using Pack Control on this Windows laptop to configure the strategy and then download it to the controller. You can get your own learning center and free pack control software by visiting workshops.opto22.com. So when it comes to wire this up, check your actuator manual for the wiring and power requirements. This SQS61 actuator is powered by 24 volts AC and takes a 0 to 10 volt DC control voltage. To power the valve, I'm going to use this small AC transformer. So now let's wire it into the actuator terminals. I'm going to begin by removing the cover off the actuator. This gives me access now to the screw terminal on the actuator. I can see here where the AC needs to be wired into the G and GO terminals. So let's do that. Because it's AC, I don't have to worry about polarity. So I'm going to wire the G first, then my GO. Okay, that's the power now wired to the actuator. Now we can turn our attention to the control voltage. We need an analog output module to generate the DC control voltage for the actuator. Depending on the number of valves that we need to control, we can choose between a single channel or a dual channel output module. I'm going to use a dual channel because in past experience I found that you never know what other parts of the process that you might want to control in the near future. So it's better to have that extra channel available. In my case then, I'm going to choose a SNAP AOV25. The wiring diagram is on the side of the module and it's also in the data sheet, which you can download from our website. We can see that there's a, a very simple positive and negative output from the module. And we can see from the actuator, has a place to land those two wires here in the Y and M terminals. So let's wire the actuator. Now we do have to get the polarity correct here. So I'm gonna put the ground wire into the M terminal. and I'm going to wire my positive control voltage into the Y terminal of the actuator. Okay, just again reviewing the wiring diagram on the side of the module, the positive wire goes into terminal 2 and the negative wire goes into terminal 3. So now let's wire that side up. Positive wire into terminal 2, push that home, gently screw that up, 
and the ground wire into terminal three. Hold that in place, screw that up. Okay, the actuator and the module are now wired together. So now it's time to attach the valve body. As you can see here, the valve bolts in at the bottom of the actuator. And we do up the two Allen bolts to hold the actuator to the valve body. And we just need to make sure that the actuator is in the home position. You can check that by pressing down on the actuator and rotating it until the linear part is all the way at the top. Now we know it's in the home position, so we can go ahead and connect the valve body to the actuator. We do that by just doing up this smaller clamp. So that's it for the wiring and the mechanical mounting of the actuator to the valve. Now let's snap the analog output module in place onto the rack. I'm gonna use this empty position seven on the end of the rack, but you can use any unused location on your rack. We can also now power up the valve actuator by plugging in our transformer. Now let's take a look at the software. Here we are in pack control. We've already got the IO rack configured. So now let's double click on the empty slot in position seven to add our analog output module. We do this by selecting the analog output group and then we can select the SNAP AOV25 module from the list. Double click on the first point of the module to open the point configuration dialog. Now we'll give the valve a tag name like cooling valve one. This is where the valve is giving a meaningful name all the way through to your software applications or cloud services. So choose your name accordingly. Next, we're gonna set up the scaling that we need for this point. I'm gonna make the units percent and the range for our valve will be zero to 100. Now click on this debug button to download this configuration of the controller. Click yes to save the strategy and yes that you've made a change and the download process will start. Once that's done, click run to execute the new strategy. Now let's test it out. If we double click on the analog output point, we can now enter a percentage that we want to drive the valve to. So let's drive it to 50% and click apply. There it is. Our actuator is now driving our valve to the position that we want. Now at this point, we could use pack control to control the valve in any number of scenarios. Perhaps you have a temperature sensor and you want to control the flow of the water to maintain a desired set point. Well, we could configure a PID loop right in the controller to take care of that for you. This actuator, like many others, also provides an output voltage that reflects its current position. So we could take that voltage and feed it back to the snap pack system with an analog input module. And then we could be sure that the valve is physically in the position that we've commanded and it hasn't got mechanically seized up somehow. Using a tool like Node Red, we could write the actuator position to a database, either locally or in the cloud, or send it to any other number of cloud services like IBM Watson or Microsoft Azure, where it could be monitored and analyzed. For example, you could set up other data points like the air or water temperature, the valve position, and say the outdoor air temperature, and we could start to analyze our HVAC efficiency. For more information about the analog output module and the parts that we used in this workshop, visit workshops.opto22.com. So there you go. The analog voltage from the module is controlling the water flow through the valve. Cheers, mate.